what we want to do, we, you know, we were talking about uh, the Ishmael. Mm -hmm. On last week. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I, well, you know, I want um, us in our lives to get to the place where we just believe God and don't have no Ishmaels. Because Ishmael, that started a whole nother issue. We, yes. They still dealing with, with right. that decision. Yes. Yes. Right. And right. so what God wants for us, mm -hmm. go on, take him. At his word. word. Uh -huh. Right, right. We've right, heard it uh -huh. so many times. Take him at his word. Act like it's so. So that we can get from, okay, the time that I believe I received mm -hmm. to manifestation. Mm -hmm. And in between, I don't get no Ishmaels where I'm trying to help God out. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but even if we, I think that we do need to grow our faith. To where we don't have any Ishmael's, mm -hmm. yeah. but even if we end up with an Ishmael, that's not the end of our faith. That's right. right. That's right. not the end of our journey. That's right. That's mm -hmm. not the end because, of the world. Because God loves us yes. with an unconditional Ishmael. love that he knows that we're not perfect and mm -hmm. he knows that we're going to have instances where we're going to do things through our flesh. Mm -hmm. So... Um, learning not to do those things, mm -hmm. I think. I think Sarah and Abraham learned greatly mm -hmm. their mistake of having yes. Ishmael. Because now, let's remember, she sent uh, Hagar away while she was still pregnant. While she was still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it it was some it was some stuff going on in that house yep. that they had to really deal with. Because yes. even when Isaac was born and the promise was born, they sent Ishmael and Hagar away again. Yes, because. Uh, Ishmael was making fun of Isaac. So what I'm saying is, is that, you know, they had to deal with some things yeah. because of that decision. Mm -hmm. But but I believe they learned some things in the same process mm -hmm. because Abraham never denied Ishmael being the son. He mm -hmm. never tried to cover up the mistake mm -hmm. because yeah. it happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the end of the day, we can see God's love. So it's a twofold purpose. Right. You know, it's really learning through the process. If if we make an Ishmael mistake, that's right. learning, mm -hmm. from it learning from and it and building our faith through mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it would be awesome for us to have a life where there are no Ishmaels. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Elder. <laughs> and this is why we are um, in this study now on yes, faith. Yes, yes, yes. We want to grow. Yes. yes. We yes. don't want to continue to have Ishmael's. We That's want right. to grow. Yes. Right. We, and, and God, like uh, um, Pasita was saying, God, there's never going to be a time when God just throws us to the side. Never. Like, right. Look, never. I told you. Never. And that's it. Right. Right. But he's all, he's right. so, mer y'all, he's right. so merciful. Yes, right. he is. Until even in their Ishmael right. thing. Right. Right. Yeah. He, he walked them through that thing. Absolutely. Right. He walked. And Absolutely. even. Had something for Ishmael. Right, right. Yeah. He had Ishmael covered. So he had, uh, he had awesome. Abraham's mistake. And, you know, we call Ishmael a mistake, but he, he had Ishmael mistake. covered. No. Yes. He, right, right. Absolutely. Because he ended up being part of the purpose and the plan for God for Abraham. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, and I believe that we serve a God that already knows oh, that yes. the places where we're going to come up short at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he knew. He mm -hmm. knew. He knew. So, and he compensated for um, those errors, those places where we error where at. Where we error at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's just like everyday life. Right. Like you said, you know, we, we don't always get it right. Correct. And God is not mad with us when we don't get it right, but his unconditional love is so prevalent and so present yes. in our lives yes. until, you know, he said, look, you know, you, you tried it your way. Right. And it didn't work out the best. Right. You know, so now let me show you. Mm -hmm. Let me order your footsteps. Right. And let me show you a better way that's going to get you better results. Right, right. What, mm -hmm. a, what an awesome, awesome. God right. Awesome. Right. that we serve, you know. Right, right. Awesome. Uh, He don't beat us up. You yep. know, it's just right. like when we have children. Right. And our children fall. Right. Or make a mistake, you know. Right. We, we pick them up. We brush them off. Right. You know, we, we don't, don't, put, them out of we the don't put them out of the house. <laughs> right. You know, we still feed them. <laughs> right. We right. still protect exactly. them. Right. We still give them a roof over their heads, <laughs> right. you know. Right. We still yeah. pay their bills. <laughs> Right. You right. know, so, what, and, and you know, if 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 we love our children right. in such a great way. Right. Oh, what what greater awesome. love. Right. That God has for us. Right. You know, that he would give his only son. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. To pay the price for us. Right. Everything that we have pertaining to life and godliness. We got it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's right. a finished work for mm -hmm. us. Yes. Correct. We just got yes. to believe. Right. You know. 
and receive mm -hmm. right. and then say what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Right, Amen. right. Amen. Amen. And say Amen. what God That's is good. saying. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. So, you know, and, and the thing is, is that in what I, I want to just chime in on what you were saying, mm -hmm. Abraham was so, um, he was not a perfect person either, no. though. He mm -hmm. had lied, you know, yeah. he had done all type of <laughs> yes, things, you know, yes. because he, you know, he went like from Sarah being do. his wife to <laughs> uh -huh. his sister to, you yes, know, all type yes. of things. But yet it never changed the purpose of him being a father of many nations. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so the thing is, is that. Because our heart and our belief, as long as our faith is in God, mm -hmm. he will show us what we need to do yeah. and how we need to do yeah. it. And mm -hmm. he will grow us through yeah. the yeah. process yeah. of all those things yeah. that we need to yeah. get rid of. And the changes we need to make. Right, mm -hmm. right, Because we right. all need to make changes. Yes, Again, yes, we're yes. not mm -hmm. perfect. We all mm -hmm. do things. We say things. We respond to things. Right. We react to things. Right. You know, that sometimes are contrary to the word of God. But the good thing about it is that God still loves us. And right. then the second thing, catch yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you catch yourself, you know, you go to God and he gets you right back in, mm -hmm. into the race. Right, right, you know? right. Mm -hmm. We never lose a beat. Right, mm -hmm. right. We and, never and lose a beat. the spirit of God yes. is the one that reminds us, y'all. Yes. Even when we get yes. off track. Yes. He'll bring, he'll oh, look. Yes. He will bring us right back on track. Right, yes. right, right back on yes. right. Just like God did, right. that, bring them right back on right. track. Right, mm. right. Because mm. His plan and His purpose, right, it's it's going it's right. going to be fulfilled. It's so, be and fulfilled. and that's the same it's, thing in the midst of this pandemic and this uh -huh. COVID nineteen and this Absolutely. virus that's attacking Absolutely. these everybody in the yeah. entire world is attacking everyone. So, in the midst of this attack, God already knew that this virus was going to be mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. He already knew everything that we were going to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so we have a choice to believe in God in mm -hmm. Psalms 91. Yeah. Or we have a choice to believe and walk in fear of this virus. Exactly. Wow. He exactly. already knew. Yeah. He already knew. And he mm -hmm. already knew what we would need mm -hmm. in this season. Mm -hmm. So do we believe that he already knew? Mm -hmm. Do we have enough faith to know that God loves us so much that will, he will continue to shield us? And even if we are opened and, and exposed to this virus, God still has us. He still has mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. yeah. That doesn't change his love for us. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. And even in the midst, we got to we gotta trust him. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We got to have faith in right. this thing, you know, right. even throughout this whole thing. Um, and and, talk, and, and I, I want to kind of shift gears just a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because – in order for us to have faith, and we know that faith is in two places, in our hearts and in our mouth, uh, but there's trust has to be somewhere in there. Right, you know? right. Um, you can't have faith and believe in something that you don't trust. Correct. And so let's go to Romans chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. And we are going to uh, start with verse, uh, oh gosh, really the whole chapter is just awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's start with chapter 6, uh, verse 16. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 16. I'm just trying to see if we need to go back up some more. Um, mm. Wow. Wow. Let's start at 16. And here it says, and, and we're going to read this out of the Amplified Version, mm -hmm. and it says, Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. I want to stop right there. Inheriting the promise depending entirely on faith. Now, God was speaking about Abraham here. Mm -hmm. And God had already promised Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. But here he's saying, in order to inherit that promise that was given to him, and we all have received the promise mm -hmm. from God. We all have received, received the promise of grace, okay? He says that you have to depend entirely on faith. That is Confident trust in an unseen God. Right. Let's talk about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you can, you can sit down and build a relationship with a person and you begin to trust that individual that you see. And you can tangibly, physically touch them and you see them, mm -hmm. you know. 
But how is it that you can have trust in an unseen God? Now, we know that the Bible is full of promises. And we know as born-again believers, we are partakers of those promises. That is our inheritance. As, as the old people say, that's our blood-bought right. Mm -hmm. Everything that's in that word that God has created for mankind, it belongs to us. Mm -hmm. right. It's a finished work. Mm -hmm. It's done. Mm -hmm. It's already ours. But I want to speak to those who may not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And you may be asking the question, I want to believe God. I want to have faith that, you know, that you guys are talking about. But I, it's hard for me to trust something that I cannot see. Mm -hmm. Okay? How is it that we trust? And we're going to, I'm going to finish reading this scripture, and then I'm going to come back to answer that question. And okay. don't y'all let me forget to answer that question. Okay. It says, therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith, that is, confident trust in an unseen God, in order that it may be given as an act of grace, his unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham, that's including us, mm -hmm. not only to those Jewish believers who kept the law, but also to those Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, talking about us, who is the spiritual father of us all, as it is written in the scripture. And this is the promise that he gave Abraham. I have made you the father of many nations mm -hmm. in the sight of him in whom he believed. That is God who gives life to the dead and call those things which does not exist. Verse 18. In hope against hope, Abraham believed that he would be the father of many nations as he had been promised by God. Okay? So numberless shall your descendants be. And this is God talking to Abraham. Without being weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about Abraham, who did not consider his old age of giving uh, or bearing a child. Mm -hmm. Not as good as dead for producing children. Since he was about 100 years old, and he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he did not doubt or waver in unbelief concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and empowered by faith, giving glory to God, being fully confident that God had the power to do what he promised to do. Now, Proceda shared that story with you. And this here is just uh, an overview of what God had promised Abraham and even in his faith process, mm -hmm. even in when he took his eyes and, and off the things of God and began to look at things from a natural standpoint, God still said that he did not waver with unbelief because in his heart, deep down in his heart, Abraham knew that God would come through. Mm -hmm. And the only reason Abraham knew that God would come through, and I'm talking about trust, is that Abraham and Sarah had a relationship with God. Right, right. God had promised things to Abraham, and Abraham believed them. Right. And so he knew if God did it then, mm -hmm. God can do it now. Right, right. In this scripture here, we see confidence, our confident trust in. In this scripture, we also see call things into being that do not uh, exist. In this passage of scripture, we also see that you got to believe. Mm -hmm. In this passage of scripture, we see that Abraham was not weak in his faith, that he did not doubt or waver in unbelief. And we also see that he was fully confident or he was fully persuaded. The only reason or the only way that can happen is that he, you got to have relationship. And so you, I want to answer the question, how is it that I can 
have the faith that you're talking about, have that belief in God, the only way you're going to be able to do that is that you're going to have to build trust. And the only way you build trust is that you got to spend time. So I want to talk about trust because trust is one of, one of the most important components or factors of faith. And I want to start by asking you a question. How are you going to have faith when you don't trust God? How are you going to have faith when you don't trust God? The second question I want to, want to ask you tonight is, what is real trust? Okay, what is real trust? I want to define that for you. The Vines Expository Dictionary, our definition says, trust is to have active confidence or to commit into. Active confidence or to commit into. In order for you to have active confidence, anything that's active is alive. Mm -hmm. Anything that's active is moving. Mm -hmm. It's going forward. Mm -hmm. And so in order for you to have that active confidence in God, you got to build that trust. Another biblical diction, uh, definition is, is that trust is a firm belief in the reliability. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. A firm belief in the reliability. The reliability of what? Relying on God. Trusting in God. Knowing that, you know, you can't fix it. You've tried it. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only God has the answers. Right, right, right. If you want life, if you want um, hope, if you want peace, if you want joy, if you want the promises of God, it's going to come through faith and trust and his reliability. I can rely on him. Right. I can lean on him. Right. I can trust him. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's like um think about this. Think think about you having a job and your boss can rely on you to be there every day, 5 days a week or 7 days a week or 6 days a week. They don't have to call you in, every day and say get up you automatically get up mm -hmm. because you got a belief and a trust that if you get up, go to that job, and perform your duties, that at the end of, the, of, of that pay period, you are going to receive mm -hmm. a reward. Mm -hmm. Now, but when you receive that reward, did you see it when you first got hired? Did Absolutely you see the not. money? Absolutely so you're actually not. trusting in something that you can't that you haven't seen yet. Absolutely. So you're trusting in something that you can't see. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the things of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to take the word of God mm -hmm. and trust that as if your life depends upon it. Mm -hmm. You got to believe that thing over and beyond what the natural things may dictate dictate to you because sometimes the natural in the natural things don't look good they just don't but if you make a quality decision mm -hmm. that regardless of what's going on around me right i'm gonna take the word of god mm -hmm. and i'm gonna believe what it says mm -hmm. i'm gonna stand on it as my life depends upon mm -hmm. it, and I'm going to stand on it until this thing change. Right, right, right. Until what I'm, I'm experiencing right now in the natural mm -hmm. uh, change, mm -hmm. you know, as they say, take a paradigm shift, mm -hmm. turn around, mm -hmm. I'm going to stand on the word of God. Right. So that means I'm going to have to trust him. Listen to this. I was listening to Pastor Dollar uh, uh, some weeks ago, and he made this statement. He said trust was the currency or the medium exchange to faith. In other words, faith has to be the center of everything. Correct. So if I am believing God, if I, if I have been diagnosed with a sickness or I am experiencing a sickness or pain in my body, 
when I take the word of God or when I make a decision that I'm going to trust God, mm -hmm. an exchange takes take place. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is that I am exchanging this sickness. I'm giving the sickness to God in exchange to receive his healing mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. and faith is the conduit in which that takes place. Right, right. So it's like a currency or a medium exchange. Mm -hmm. I'm exchanging my sickness and disease, and I am, and then faith, I'm using my faith to do that. Right. And then I am receiving mm -hmm. healing into my physical body. Right, right. So, you know, we got to make a quality decision. I want to encourage you. I know that it may be hard or you think that it's hard for you to trust God, but you just got to make up in your mind and say, you know what? I'm right. going to try it. Right. Try it. Right, right. You've tried everything else that you possibly can, and things don't seem to be working. Try God and just stick with God. Right. And you will see the change taking place. Right. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. And I know right. this is a familiar scripture. Yeah, you're trusting in something. And you got to trust mm -hmm. in something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trusting in what you're doing and it's not working, try God. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, as they say, turn the radio station. Yeah. I think it make this a little bit harder than what it really is. Than what it is. Right, right. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, we, we, we trust that when we get in our car, it's going to start. Absolutely. We trust, like when we got up here and sat in these seats, we trust that these seats was going <laughs> to hold us. Absolutely. We trust in a lot of things and don't even realize that we're putting our faith and our trust in those things. That's right. And so um, it's so easy for us to put trust in the natural things of this world. Mm -hmm. We put trust in even our parents, That's our right. mother, That's our right. brother, sister. We even put trust in people on our jobs. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we want to put a brick wall up when it comes to trusting God mm. and, and right. trusting in what his word says. And what his word says. So I think it's, it's, it's us being able to, to reprogram our minds and to open our minds up to, to really just think about this thing at the full scope of what it really is. It because is. it's not hard to trust in it's anything. Not. It's, it's not. Really not. It's not. It's really not. Um, let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Elder, you want to read that? Okay. And we're, and we're reading from the um, Amplified um, Translation. Uh -huh. It says, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understand it. Talk about that for a minute, Elder. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, it, it just pretty much says <laughs> what it means. What it we means. need to trust That's it. Mm -hmm. in the Lord with mm -hmm. all of our heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes we think we know better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know why we think that. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that my way is so much better that I've, I've, really, I've really got this thing, you know, I really don't need God. I, uh -huh. And you know what? We'll separate sometimes. Right. Okay. I don't need you for this, God. <laughs> you know, I can handle this. Uh -huh. Okay. But uh -huh. I'm going to bring you in on uh -huh. this. Uh -huh. Well, we got to get to the play. I need to trust in him for everything. For everything. With all of my heart. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, you remember the guy, I can't remember that king's name. He was just, he thought he had it all together. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he, the big eye and uh -huh. I got this all. And then he was turned over and then he was out the next day or so acting like an animal. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And when he came back to himself, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. glorified right, the God right, of right. heaven. That's right. right. And so uh, when we get in trouble is that we start um, relying. Mm hmm on our own mm -hmm. knowledge, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. own understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But here in Proverbs, now when we talk about Proverbs, this is wisdom. That's right. wisdom. Right. That's right. wisdom. Right. He says, trust in yes, and Lord. rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own mm -hmm. insight and understanding. Mm -hmm. right. So the ble best place for us to do is, look, Lord, I know you know. Right, right. You know. I'm going to trust you in Gotta this. Got to trust right. you. Yeah, I right. need your understanding. I'm, I'm bringing you in on this. Right. Because y'all know God is not going to barge in on He's us. He's not going to barge he in. He wants to be invited. He, That's he, right. He wants to be invited in. That's right. So we want to just, look, 
Lord, I don't know. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to have to help right. me right. with this. Yeah. And this one verse actually is going contrary to what we're actually taught as children because, you know, when, you, when you're growing up, your parents teach you to rely on your own understanding, <laughs> yeah. rely on your own insight. Yes. Think yes. about it now. Yes. I mean, you're, you're taught that in schools. You're taught that in everything mm -hmm. that you do. You're taught to rely on your own understanding. The world system. Correct, correct, correct. And so when you get into the word of God and, and understand that we don't have to rely on our own yes, understanding Lord. and just remind ourselves that we're just trusting God. And really, to be honest with you, that is one of the most areas that's attacked is our trust. Is our trust. Mm -hmm. Our trust. And because when you stop trusting in anything, there's no hope. There's no hope. You are putting yourself in a hopeless place. That's right. And, and a lot of times, life will bring things that will hit us and, and, and cause us to question, what are we really trusting in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this verse right here in Proverbs 3, 5 actually gives us the definition of why it's so important, important. to guard our trust yes. and hold on to really just hold on to holding on just as tight as we can to trust in God with everything in us. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to read it to you out of the message translation. Um, it, it just kind of brings it home. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Mm -hmm. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. <laughs> right. You know, and like you say, when we try to, you know, lean to God, uh, lean to our own understanding, that's what how we understand things, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but that doesn't mean that is right. Right. And then it says, listen for God's voice in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. Right. Don't assume that you know it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Run to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Run from evil. Mm -hmm. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Mm hmm Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. And then it goes on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have to decide that if we're going to trust God all the way, we got to trust him all the way. Not sometimes, like you said, sometimes are in some things, but we got to trust him in all things. Mm -hmm. In all things. Right. Um, and then you, you know, you may ask the question, well, how do I even know that I'm trusting God? You know, I think I'm trusting him, but how do I know that? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 26. That's going to answer the question for you. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 26, verses okay. 3 and 4. Okay. Mm hmm And it reads, this is the Amplified Version, and it reads, You will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast. Mm hmm that is committed and focused on you in both inclination and character because he trusts and take refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. Mm -hmm. Trust confidently in the Lord forever. He is your fortress, your shield, your banner, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock, rock, Mm -hmm. of ages mm -hmm. yes if you want to know if you're trusting god my question is do you have peace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the bible declares mm -hmm. that he will keep us in perfect, perfect peace, peace yeah. if our mind mm -hmm. is Stay stayed on him, him. Yeah. right because see our mind is the mm -hmm. battleground mm -hmm. in which right. satan mm -hmm. will come and mm -hmm. try to have a foothold mm -hmm. right he will keep you in perfect peace mm -hmm. not only that if you are committed and focused to what god has said in his word his mm -hmm. character, his way of doing things, mm -hmm. his instructions, then trust will build your confidence. Right, mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. give you the hope that you need mm -hmm. to right. walk out the process of faith. Mm -hmm. Right. Trust confidently on confidently. the Lord forever. Right, yeah. right. I right. got confidence yeah. in him. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have that expectation, yes. right. you know, yes. with an outstretched <laughs> neck yes. that whatever God says, it's yes. going to happen. Yes. Right, right. Yes. May not be in my timing, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. as the songwriter yes. says, he's an on time yeah. God. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. You know, it may not come when you mm -hmm. want him, mm -hmm. but he'll always be right on time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Amen. that's the way we have to look at faith. Right. You know, 
it's it's a seed planting, mm -hmm. you know, it's a cultivating of the seed, yes. and then you reap the harvest, right, seed time right. and harvest. Mm -hmm. I want to leave with this last scripture here um, on trust. When you trust God, you will keep your attention and your focus on what you really trust and believe in. Mm -hmm. What you really trust and what you really believe in. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Psalms 31, 14, and 15. Mm -hmm. And then we'll end with this scripture okay. for tonight. Mm -hmm. It says, and this is the Amplified again. It says, but as for me, I trust confidently in you and your greatness, O Lord. I said, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Mm -hmm. Rescue me from the hands of my enemies and those who, pers who pursue and persecute me. What a position or mm -hmm. a posture of faith. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I trust confidently in mm -hmm. your greatness. Mm -hmm. Not my greatness. Mm -hmm. right. Not my understanding. Mm -hmm. right. Not right. my ability. Yeah. Right. Not yeah. my will, but his greatness. Mm -hmm. And I have to believe that my time is mm -hmm. in God's hands. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that he loves me enough and he cares enough for me right. that he will take care of me. Right, right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, our time is up again. Uh, we will see you again on next Tuesday night. Again, we'll be picking up, talking about faith, and then we'll talk about the second thing that is needed um, in your Christian walk. And so, Elder okay. is going to close us out for tonight. Okay. So, Father, we just thank you tonight for your word. We thank you, Father, for everything that has been shared, Father God. For some of us, it was seeding. For others, watering. But, God, we thank you for that word that we receive, that word that we believe, and that word that we practice. And we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. In now, Jesus we want to give invitation to you tonight. Uh, Pastor Pat mentioned earlier, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to do so tonight, we just want to um, just invite you. It, it's not a hard process. Um, Sister Pasita said, we just make things harder than they actually are. But I remember uh, uh, Paul, Saul, on the way to Damascus, um, and he simply said, Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so what we want to invite you tonight to do is receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So we're just going to help you with the words. And so if, if that's you, you desire uh, to come into the kingdom of God, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat this after me. Say, God, your word says, if I will believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. I'm confessing that now. I believe with my heart that Jesus died for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. I receive you as Lord of my life. And I ask you, help me to walk this out day by day. Jesus is is my Lord. My Lord. And so tonight, if you if you believe that, you receive that, you have um, confessed that and received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we invite you into the kingdom. You have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and to the kingdom of God's dear son. And I'm telling you, it's nothing like living in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are witnesses of that. Amen. We have come out of darkness into his marvelous light, and our lives have changed for the better. And not only have they changed for the better, every day is getting better yes. because we are trusting God the more we are living and we're walking by faith and so if you made that confession tonight you go to our website there's some things out there um, that will help you in your walk um, we just invite you get into the word of God if you don't have a Bible get you a Bible yes. um, you can pull it up on your phone we right. got Bible all over the place right. Uh, right. so there's ways right. to get it but get into the word of God because this is how you're going to begin number one to trust God to right. walk it out right. uh, to get get in faith to stay in faith and then to have father just completely change your life yes. and so thank you for uh, um 
coming with us tonight. We just appreciate you because we know there are other things that you could be doing. There's other uh, things that you could be watching, but we just thank you. And for believers um, and all of the members of Newness of Life World Outreach Center, you know what to do concerning your tithe and your offering. Um, we have not forgotten about that. And so please do that. But we just pray blessing over the balance of your week. And we decree and declare that Jesus is Lord. We'll see you next time. Amen.